Today, inshallah, we'll talk about kingdom protista. We have talked about protists before as an introduction. If you recall, all living things are divided into these six kingdoms. And we had suggested that two of these kingdoms are dedicated to bacteria, kingdom archibacteria and kingdom eubacteria. Archi meaning old, eu meaning true. These are unicellular and they are prokaryotes. And I had suggested before, what is the defining feature, distinguishing feature between prokaryotes and eukaryotes? So eukaryotic uh, living things are more complex than prokaryotes. And as a measure of their complexity, they compartmentalize their, their jobs, right? So eukaryotes versus prokaryotes, the single distinguishing feature is that eukaryotes have membrane-bound organelles. Got it? If anybody ever wakes you up in the middle of the night and says, give me an example of a prokaryote, you turn to bacteria. They're the poster child for prokaryotes. Eukaryotes are basically anybody, everybody else then. Uh, so today we're going to talk about protist. Then you have to ask yourself, what is a protist? Well, protist is defined as, okay, it's not bacteria, not fungus, not plant, not or animal. Okay, then it's a protist. It's by, like, almost by default. Unlike bacteria, protists are eukaryotic cells. There's no typical protist. In other words, if you think of as a bacteria, something comes to your mind, right? In the same way, there's no typical protist. There's nothing, there, if you have protist, like 10 things come to mind because they're all different. They're a different category of protist. They can be unicellular, they can be multicellular. They can be autotrophs, means they're photosynthetic, heterotrophs, or decomposers. The kingdom protista then is categorized in different ways. So we said there are three types of protist. How many types? Three types. Animal-like protist, they're called protozoans. So we said they're protozoans, right? They're animal-like protist. And they're plant-like protist. And they're fungus-like protist. And we talked about this briefly. They're animal-like, but they're not animal-like. They're plant-like, but they're not plant-like. They're fungus, but they're, uh, they're like fungus, but they're not like fungus. That's why they're all by themselves. They have some features of each of these, but not all features of each of these. And these tend to be some of the most exotic living things out there. So what does it mean for a protist to be animal-like? Well, they eat other stuff. See, the defining feature of animals is that, you know, they eat other things. You ever see a plant eating other things? No, usually, right? Yeah, this is a Venus flytrap. We get to Venus flytrap suddenly. So. Protists, animal-like protists, they eat like animals, but are unicellular. Animals, by definition, really, they're multicellular, you know. What kind of animal is like one cell animal? Like, you know what I'm saying? So they're unicellular, but they have, uh, they go around and eat other things. Then plant-like protists. So animal-like protists are called protozoan, protozoa. <coughs> plant-like protists are called algae. Plant-like protists are called algae. They're plant-like because they do photosynthesis, but they have no other features that are typical of, of plants otherwise. They have no roots, they have no organ systems, there's no stems, there's no leaves, etc. And the fungus-like protist, they're decomposers, but they have the ability to move. Have you ever seen a fungus walking around? It's just kind of odd, right? Bloop, 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 bloop. Except like in Mario Brothers, right? Like fungus. <laughs> but no, fungus don't move. They're stationary. But protist, at some stage in their, in their life, okay, they're decomposed like fungus. At some stages in their life, they move. They have the ability to move. So animal-like protists mean or protozoan, they eat, but they're unicellular plant-like, they do photosynthesis, but that's really about it. That's uh, the similarity ends there. And fungus-like protists, they are decomposers, uh, but at some point they move. So we're going to talk about animal-like protists first. Animal-like protists are called uh, protozoans. This is one reason. This is one reason when you go abroad, drink clean water. Amoebas, therefore, cause diarrheal illness. They infect the gastrointestinal tract, and they cause bloody diarrhea because they're found in fresh water. Okay. So amoebas is a great example of uh, uh, animal. So amoebic dysentery, yeah? People get, you get amoebic dysentery. You know what, it, what is dysentery? What is dysentery? Dysentery is diarrhea, not just any diarrhea. 
diarrhea with blood. So bloody diarrhea it is known as dysentery. So amoebic dysentery. They belong to the phylum Rhizopoda. And then there are flagellates. The flagellates are so named because they have flagella. They have tails. They move around. And then there are ciliates. Ciliates are so called because they have cilia. Flagella is like a tail. Cilia are like hairs. Okay. And then there are sporozoans. The most famous sporozoan is malaria bug, the plasmodium that causes malaria. We're going to talk about malaria today. These are animal-like protists. We're going to talk about them first. Amoebas. Amoebas are able to move around like this. It's fascinating with the way they move. They move by pushing their cytoskeleton forward and they just put out these pseudopods. So they have these pseudopods. Pseudo means fake or false. Pod means feet, like podiatrists, like pseudopod. They have mitochondria, therefore there are eukaryotes because it's a membrane-bound organelle, right? They have a nucleus and they have plasma. Every cell has to have a plasma membrane, yes or no? Every cell has to have a plasma membrane? <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, it's like you can't have a house without four walls, otherwise like a gazebo or something, you know? So plasma membrane, you got to have a boundary, it's a plasma membrane. Not all cells have cell wall, yes? And they have this contractile vacuum, we talked about that, and that's the sump pump. Sump pump takes the water out constantly because the water keeps rushing in, right? And this is cytoplasm. There's a food vacuums. It seems haphazard that they they move. They're shapeless. They're not actually not shapeless. That's the back end, and that's like the forward end. So here's another one. See, it's moving. And, and as I said, it has a back end and a front end. It's not entirely shapeless. So here's a meat butt. It's like eating here. It looks like a paramecium. See, so you go around and just eat it. So that's amoeba. Some of the amoebas, they have a shell. They have a shell. They're called foraminiferans. Foraminiferans. And radiolarians. Now, the word foramen means like a hole. Foramen means a hole. So, so they have this shell that protects them, but they have holes, meaning they can put out the pseudopodias out still and do the, what they have to do. Now, how do they divide? Okay, so asexual reproduction in amoeba. Now, we have said before the difference between sexual and asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction, there's no mixing of DNA. There's no exchange of DNA material. Asexual reproduction is just like mitosis, divided into two. That's it, right? So that's the difference. So that's how they just basically, they duplicate the nucleus, divide into two. So that's the amoebas. We should know amoebas. Where do you find amoebas? In the water in your backyard. So here's flagellates. Giardia is an example. This is giardia. Giardia is also freshwater infections, just diarrhea. And uh, this is how it looks like. Now it's harder to see possibly here, but there's a, there's a tail here that's flipping here. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, sperm has a flagella. See, same, it's very similar, same structure. It allows for mobility. This is a higher magnification of the structure of flagella. It shows you over here how mechanical it is, right? It's like, it's, it's like somebody came out of engineering school and designed it, right? It's really amazing. Anyway, so that's the flagellates. Giardia was the example. And then there's the ciliates. Now, cilia are these tiny hair-like things outside. They also allow mobility. We have cilia, like in our noses. They're interesting things, these cilia. They're on top of cells. They're part of cell membrane. They move in like in, in a rhythm. Like. So um, paramecium is a uh, uh, ciliate. Uh, it does not have flagella, right? You see, there's no flagella here. It has contractile vacuoles too. Contractile vacuoles are sump pumps, right? Remember we said that? Sump pumps. They push the water back out constantly. Um, and you can see some of those. Here's, look at this contractile vacuole. See that? It's like a starry shaped thing. See? You see? That's cool, huh? And here's the other one in this dude. Yes? And finally, the sporozoans. These sporozoans are complex. Sporozoans are responsible for malaria. Now, a mosquito is associated with malaria, not because mosquito causes malaria. Both mosquitoes and, and humans 
both mosquitoes and humans are victims of this protozoan. Both the mosquito and the humans are victims of uh, this protozoan. And this is where you find malaria. This is the highest incidence of malaria. See, that's that's like uh, Jeddah right there. You gotta take your deep precautions. And uh, if it's India, very uh, sub-Saharan Africa over here. So, uh, and if you go to Pakistan, India, you gotta be careful. What happens is, this is what happens, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna look at this picture in, in detail, okay? So what happens is this. Now, the mosquito uh, bites the human. Now, what's the mosquito doing biting human? They bite, they, they, they get blood from us, right? Why do they bite? It's actually the female mosquito that does that. It's a pregnant female mosquito that bites you. It's a female mosquito. Um, why do they bite the pregnant ones? Yes, why do they bite? And why blood? Because that's where all the glucose is. Yes? It's like nutrition. Blood is very nutritious. Right? They hit the blood because like, oh yeah, I like it. You know what I'm saying? It's sweet. It must have diabetes. So they, they do it because that's how they get nutrition. And when they bite the human beings, they transmit the malaria parasite. So mosquito is called a vector. Not victor. Vector. Vector is a living thing that is a taxi or a carrier of a pathogen of something that causes disease. So mosquito is called mosquito is a vector. So the way you fight malaria is by getting rid of mosquitoes. Uh, so when the mosquito bites, see, oh look at this. So when a mosquito bites, the uh, plasmodium bug, it goes into our bloodstream. Okay. Now from there, from there, so it goes from here, and it goes in the bloodstream, and it goes to the liver. The, you know, the stuff that goes to those are called their sporozo sporozoite. Now look, bug that inf that causing the disease is called it's a protozoan. It's called Plasmodium. It has different stages. Just like it has like a toddler stage, teenage stage, just so it causes a lot of trouble. And then it has like an adult stage. Do you understand? So it looks different. It looks physically different in different stages of his life. Just like a tadpole looks nothing like a frog. It's the same organism, right? But it looks very different. So it shouldn't be surprised that it looks different in different stages in his life. But anyway, in this stage, it, it infects a human being and, and it goes to the liver. Why does it go to the liver? Because everything goes to the liver, okay? So our blood collects from, from our veins, right here, and it goes to the liver and is detoxified before it gets delivered to the heart, okay? That's the, one of the jobs of the liver, is to purify us. So it goes to the liver and it doesn't get it, obviously. It infects the liver. And then here it is infecting the liver cells. They go in there. They just come and knock, knock. Can we come in? Said no. Okay, here we are. They just go in anyways. Okay. So they infect the liver cells. Now, in the here's this infecting the liver cell. It goes in the liver cell. Oh, here it is. It's in the liver cell. It's kind of freaky, right? I have to tell you, it's this is not the freakiest organism. Period. You don't even know the kind of weird stuff that happens. In the infectious world, okay. So it goes into the liver, all right, and it makes a lot of babies, all right. So, but these are not the same looking type of living things. So it goes over here and it spits out, and these called these are called merozites, okay? merozites, all right. Now, now these little tiny little thingies, okay, they go then infect red cells. You follow? So they go from liver, they do their thing, they multiply, and they, they come out as you know, in teenagers, right? And in there, and then they go to the red cells, they infect red cells. Red cells, they divide a lot of times, a lot of times they divide, until the red cells get sick. This is a red cell, see? And they're dividing in there, see? And then it bursts and releases a lot of mirosite. And this happens in cycles, that's why the fever and all of that response of malaria is like cyclical. They do it in burst.
Yeah. Now, what would happen? What do you think was one of the symptoms of people who have malaria? If it goes affects the red cells, the red cells are bursting left and right. The red cells are dying, right? So they become they don't have enough blood in them. They become anemic. So they become tired, pale. See, so they burst the red cells. Some some of these from here, some of these they mature into two different genotypes, male and female. So they burst and the new new ones infect other red cells and they keep going like this because like Xerox copy, Xerox copy, burst, Xerox copy, burst, infect other red cells, burst, infect, red. it's like a factory. Why do they infect red cells? It's a free flow, it's like, you know, a cafeteria, just go in there, use up everything and leave, right? But then some of them develop into male and female versions. Okay, now, so you understand that the liver stage is different, and then uh, and then it spits out this this second stage, and these they, they replicate, they replicate, and then the red cell burst and releases hundreds more, and then those hundreds more in, infect other red cells, burst red cells. Like we follow, and some of those, some of these develop into male and female gametes, gametes like sperm and eggs. Okay, I'm just telling you, it's only one good news. They don't mate inside the human being. That's good news. Huh? So, they're floating around, the male and females, until a, a mosquito bites again. Some other mosquito, doesn't have to be the same mosquito. Some other mosquito bite. Because when the mosquito bites, okay, what does a mosquito want to do? Suck the blood, right? So it sucks the, all, these, all these parasites in them. That's how the mosquitoes get infected, right? So when they suck the blood out, where does the blood go? Into their digestive tract, right? Into the mosquito's digestive tract, right? So these go into the digestive tract, the mosquito, male and female. Then they made the sperm and eggs, their, their, their version of sperm and eggs. They come together to make a zygote. You understand? And then they gave a zygote. And then from there, the zygote migrates there, migrates there to their salad, and then matures and makes these spore sites. Now the difference between the oocyte and they're here, see the sporozytes are able to swim, see? Sporozytes, they're able to swim and infect liver cells. They're different creatures compared to these merozytes, which are just go like that. First mosquito bite infects, right? And if the person was not infected already. But if the person was already infected, the mosquito bite will take the, take the bug out of them and then they go infect somebody else. Does that make sense? So the second, so this is the same mosquito in the p cartoon picture, but it's different mosquito in real life. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or different site, right? And then it goes here, it goes through there, and goes and sits at the salivary glands. Sits in the mosquito salivary gland, sa saliva, right? Why? Because every time mosquito bites into a thing, it uses some of its saliva, see? <laughs> How do they know to do that? I don't know. It must have gone to school or something. The infected mosquito bite, causes the sporozoites, the sporozoites to go into the bloodstream of the person. Then they go travel to the liver and they hibernate that and produce other uh, uh, next generation of their species, so to speak. Those are the mirrors, which infect the red cells and they cause a lot of trouble. The symptoms of malaria are related to this part of the cycle, the red cell part of the cycle, not as much as the liver, liver part, okay? And then, and some of them develop into the, into the gametes, the gametocytes. Sites mean cell, right? Gametocytes. Yes. In fact, if you're traveling to area where, where there's a lot of malaria, sometimes you're required to take malaria prophylaxis medication. We'll talk about that. Yes. It's really amazing if you think about it. Earth at one time was just like bacteria, right? How does this all come about, right? So from a science point of view, they evolved into recognizing that this works for them, right? Follow? So the way you diagnose somebody who's got malaria, is you take a sample of their blood and you look at it under a microscope. See, a red cell is very unique among cells, right? It has no membrane-bound organelles except for a nucleus, right? It's true or false? Uh, red cells have no membrane-bound organelles except for the nucleus. What do you think? Red cells have no membrane-bound organelles except for nucleus, so they don't have like mitochondria and this and that. False. Red cells have no membrane more organized, period. Red cells have nothing. They're like just bags of proteins and hemoglobin that carry oxygen for us and whatever the proteins that they need. They, red cells, as part of their maturation process, they get everything taken out of them. Do you understand that? 
So red cells should have nothing inside, right? So if you see anything inside like this, whoa, what is that? Whoa, what is that? So if male gametocyte, female gametocyte, yeah, you follow? Okay. So you look at a person's blood smear and you look at the red cells to see if they have any species. Look at this. So this is a person who's got malaria. See, they're, ooh, look at that, they're moving. This is how they look. They, they're, they're living things, they move. They should have nothing inside. These are already dysmorphic, so they're, they're going to burst soon. Mosquito is the vector of the malaria. This is kind of like their grade school. That's kind of like their high school version. And look at this, as they destroy the red cells. So what kind of symptoms do people have when they have malaria? Well, malaria can affect lots of organs. Okay? They have kind of headache, they can get chills, sweats, uh, coughing problems. The spleen gets big. You know why spleen gets big? Spleen, you gotta know. What is the spleen? What does the spleen do? It's a graveyard for red cells. When red cells get old, their their inners are recycled, right? So they go and they die. They're buried there. Okay. So if red cells are dying, all the stuff even gets delivered. They take out sick, dead looking red cells from there. So spleen being big is one of the. Uh, if you examine somebody, if the spleen is big, that's another sign. Fatigue, muscle aches and pains, back pain, fever, headache, all that kinds. These are systemic signs. Okay, so here's malaria, see? These are the gametocytes, the gamete versions. So there are many medications that are used to treat malaria. And these are all, that's primaquine, chloroquine, and etc. Protozoa that causes the infection is called plasmodium. Plasmodium, that's the name of the actual bug that's doing all the activity. Plasmodium, there are different versions of malaria. Plasmodium vivax, plasmodium falciparum. So when people travel, they have to look at which version of, plas uh, of malaria that, that's endemic in that area to get the right medications. Plasmodium. So that's, that's malaria. Really, these are important things. So, so, so we're talking about kingdom protista. We talked about animal-like protist. And we talked about amoeba, the flagellus, the ciliates, and the sporozoans. Amoebas, uh, flagellates, we talked about giardia as an example, ciliates, we talked the paramecium as an example, and as a sporozoan, plasmodium vivax, right?